morning, everyone. Welcome to Heartland Baptist. This morning, I'm going to speak on John chapter 4, beginning at verse 10 through 26. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? And are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as well as his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water, springing up into everlasting life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water, that I may not thirst nor come here to draw. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You have said well, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and, and the one that you are, that you now have is not your husband in that you spoke truly. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshiped on this mountain, and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know that we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. The desert within. <clears throat> Imagine that you have just finished a long run or completed a strenuous hike. Your body has, be, has perspired so much that you feel as though there's no moisture left in you. Your throat's so dry that it's hard to swallow, and there's a gritty taste in your mouth from all the dust that you've swallowed on your journey. Now imagine that you reach for a tall glass of ice-cold water. The sensation of the chilled water going down your throat instantly refreshes you. As you continue drinking, you can almost feel the water coursing down into your body all the way to your toes. You keep drinking and feel as though you can't get enough of this precious liquid. Our souls were made to find life-giving refreshment in God. He alone satisfies the deep, seemingly unquenchable thirst that often aches within us. In him we drink from the living water that brings new life and new joy to the desert within. Shall we pray? Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this day. We thank you, Lord, for all those that came out. We thank you, Lord, for those that are watching from home. Bless each one today, Lord. We just pray that your Holy Spirit will work here in this building today and at home as well. We thank you, Lord, for our pastor and for the musicians and for your great love. Help us today, Lord, to share our love with others. In your name, amen. Well, good morning. It's good to see you here this morning, and I invite you to stand with us as we sing some wonderful worship songs of the Lord. Who has held the oceans in his hand who has numbered every grain of sand kings and nations tremble at his voice all creation rises to
you sit down. Why don't you shake someone's hand around you and welcome them this morning. Got something? Thank you. All right, folks, uh, as far as announcements are concerned, first things first, I want to remind you we're having a barbecue following the service today. It's kind of our kickoff for the fall programs. And uh, even today, we're having junior church for the little nurseries for the little kids. So if they want to go out, they're welcome to go out. Uh, they'll be taken care of this morning. Uh, also, a reminder for the month of September, we're continuing to collect rice for Heartland Helpers. And I see a lot have been dropped off already. Thank you so very much. Um, also, this one, we kind of all need to chip in here. Um, we have lost our custodian. Uh, I'm sure many of you know about the details, but we won't go into it this morning. But we've lost our, our, our custodians. And the Board of Management, Management is in the process of looking for somebody preferably in-house first, if so if anybody would be interested in doing that job, let us know. Uh, but uh, they're looking for somebody in the meantime, so we all kind of need to ch help and chip in. If you can give an hour to, or something to just clean some part of the building, we would greatly appreciate that. If we all work together, we should be okay for two or three weeks anyways as uh, the search is on for that. Also, on Wednesday, we adopted a new constitution for our church. Uh, Sherry is going to have that printed out either for next Sunday or the Sunday following, I'm sure, within the next week or two anyways. Uh, so you can have a new copy of the new constitution. File the old one. Uh, I'm not going to use it anymore. One of the things we discovered as a committee, we all had different final copies of what's the <laughs> what was the latest constitution. So don't get them all mixed up. Just use this new one so you can have a look at it and... Uh, be blessed that the Lord is going to use our church uh, through this uh, new document. Also, an announcement came in to me this morning. Uh, during the barbecue, they're going to have a horseshoe game out on the, the, the far side. That's the south side, right? The south side of the church, they're going to have a horseshoe throwing there. So if you have a car parked there, you probably want to move it. Um, especially the way some of us throw horseshoes around here. Uh, you don't want any dents in your car, so if you don't mind following the service, if it's just to move your car, that would be greatly appreciated for that. And the last thing is we are in need of some youth group leaders. Uh, we lost a couple this year, and we need some more help. If you would be willing to help out with that, please speak to myself. That would be greatly appreciated so that we can offer a program for the middle school kids this year, too. Uh, we had a lot of fun last year. Our numbers are really small, but uh, we had fun nonetheless. <laughs> Any other announcements I'm missing? Because it wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> Nothing you can think of? Pardon? Yard sale. That's right. You can start dropping stuff off this week. Tomorrow, uh, I see there's been a few bags dropped off already, but tomorrow's the official first day of dropping off stuff, and this garage sale is the following week, right? Yeah. So, good. Anything else? All right. We have ushers this morning. Mark, I see, is there. And Larry. All right. Oh, good. We got the old folks with the young folks today. <laughs> Some of the guys came later, yeah. All right. Let's pray. Father above, we are so grateful for our church. We are so grateful that we are a family in the Lord Jesus Christ. We are so grateful for the ministries that we can uh, share in together to try our very best to reach people for Jesus Christ. Bless these offerings today. May people give out of great joy and blessing to all that you do and give to them. 
and may you use it to further your work, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Good morning. Um, Elaine asked me to sing a song in a different language if I can. Um, so usually I sing either Russian or Romanian. Um, so today I'm going to do one of them. I'm not telling you what language. I don't think it will make any difference, but uh, it's, uh, it's based on uh, Psalm uh, chapter 4, verse 8. And um, when we go to bed and uh, we lay our head on the pillows, it, it's not just for physical rest. It's, it's actually more than that. It's uh, actually you have this quiet time that you can meditate upon God, can praise him, can pray to him, exalt his name, can reflect upon the blessings that he gives you, and always know that uh, he has you in the palm of his hand. And that's the song about that the door is open into heaven and that God is waiting for us to come to him. I cannot hear the music at all. Ночь над землей Спит утомленный народ Скрытый туманной мглой В долине босвод В небо открыты нам двери Бог приглашает войти Люди, давайте надеяться Верить идти в небо открыты нам двери, Бог приглашает войти. Радость нас ждет впереди. Людям спасение дано, Жертве Мессии Христа. Веру откроются в радости дивного дня. С нами в долинах удачи, Он близок в часы неудач. Плачем, смеемся, Он с нами, Божественный врач. С нами в долинах удачи, Он близок в часы неудач. С нами Божественный врач. Сын Божий стучит, хочет тебя Он спасти. Слышишь ли голос любви, к Нему поспеши. В небо открыты нам двери, Бог приглашает войти. Люди, давайте надеяться, верить идти. В небо открыты нам двери, Бог приглашает войти. Радость нас ждет впереди. Он Бог твой, Иисус 
Спаситель в грехах Он тебя принимает. Он Бог твой, Иисус Спаситель, Он любит тебя, Он прощает. над землей спит утомленный народ скрытый туманной мглой вдали небо Thank you, Sergey. Shall we go to the throne of grace this morning? <clears throat> Father, thank you for this opportunity to once again worship our Lord Jesus Christ. It is wonderful to come into the house of the Lord each week to just slow down our lives for this short hour that we gather together for. To hear from, to worship our Lord Jesus Christ. As we prepare to open the word of God, Father, we indeed uh, truly desire the Holy Spirit to be present with us. We truly desire and want to give him the opportunity to speak into our lives in some way this morning. We want to hear from you and leave this morning saying it has been good to be in the house of the Lord today. Father, we think of those um, that we know so well who are shut in and unable to come to church. Some are, have the opportunity to view online, others aren't as blessed. We pray for them, we sure love them and miss them and wish they were part of our fellowship and they are uh, to our extended fellowship. And we just pray your blessing upon all those who are unable to be here who would like to be. Father, we think of the turmoil around the world today that always seems to be war-torn areas. There always seems to be places of severe starvation. There always seems to be places where natural disasters are, are happening all over the place. Lord, it is beyond our ability to help in many ways is beyond our abilities to even know how to bring these situations to your throne of grace, but we want to pray for them. We want to uphold them and bring them before your throne of grace. Thank you that you are a God of wonderful love and mercy. Thank you you are a God who are with these people in the midst of terrible storms and trials of life. And you are in the midst of our own personal trials and storms that come our ways as well. You're a wonderful God of mercy and grace. We're grateful today for people who have given up their lives to serve you in the mission field. It's a vast globe. A lot of people haven't heard about the Lord Jesus Christ, and the work continues. A lot of people don't have the Bible in their own language, and the work continues. These servants of yours are so faithfully dedicated. 
to bringing the good news of Jesus Christ. Bless them this day. Encourage them in their discouragement. Thank you for their sacrifice. Bless their ministries, we pray. Father, we are also aware uh, of the passing of Queen Elizabeth. And she has been our head of state since the foundation of our country. And we are grateful for her many years of service. Well, Lord, we pray that you would just comfort the family uh, in the midst of the regality that they must pro portray. Their hearts are broken like everybody else when they lose a loved one. It's mommy, it's Grammy to them. Bless them and strengthen them this day. Be with our, our new king. Lord, I, I know we as Baptists don't often pray for these things, but it's a transition time in life. And we pray for him and uh, pray your blessing upon him. Thank you for the ministries we're about to undertake again that really kick off today. And uh, we look forward to a wonderful season of ministry. And we pray, Lord, that young people and children and even perhaps some adults may come to know you throughout the course of our work this coming year, and as we head into the fall and winter months. Bless the work we are about to endeavor. May we have a good time this afternoon as well as we uh, eat together a few hot dogs. Bless us now as we open the word of God and minister to us, I pray in Christ's name, amen. All right, folks, we began last week a journey through the book of First Peter. And so if you have your Bibles, I, of course, encourage you to have your Bibles and to open up with me to 1 Peter. <clears throat> we are just looking at verse 3 today. And uh, there's a lot here in this little verse. Paul writes, or Peter rather, I'm so used to saying Paul. Peter writes, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And that's all we are reading this morning. I think this morning, regardless of your personal political persuasions, that each of us today are so thankful for the freedom we have in our country to worship our Lord Jesus Christ, to come without fear, to be able to have small groups and attend them without fear of reprisal or fear of arrest, to, to have your own Bible in your own language, to be able to read it again without worrying about somebody breaking your door down and taking you away in chains. Spiritually, we are very blessed here in Canada, and we should be thankful. Indeed, as much as our politicians like to run from it, our very country is founded on Christian principles and the Bible. And it is written all over the place in Parliament. But for some reason, we like to sweep it all under the rug today. Not so for all people in this world, I'm afraid. Uh, some people do not have the privilege of... Um, freedom of worship. I read this story this week of this lady who I believe she was from China, though, though the country itself was not mentioned in her story for some odd reason, I thought was really odd. But I think she was from China, and I want to share you just a bit of this story. Not all of it, because it was really lengthy. It takes uh, probably the whole, <laughs> the whole message to read the whole story. But this is what she wrote. She said, today I was released from jail. I am overwhelmed with emotion. I've just spent four years in hell on earth and could not and still survive. There was this was entirely due to God's protection and a guidance. About 3 p.m., I was brought back to my village by some local officials, including the director of the local Bureau of Justice office, ad officer at the police station, the village committee secretary, and the whole township. Uh, township public security offer, officer. They took me to the local Bureau of Justice office first and then to the police station. 
And at the same time, they took samples of my hair, blood, and handwriting, and also took fingerprints and photographs. The police officer who took charge of me said to me, you must stay within the country. If you go outside, you must report to us, otherwise we'll arrest you, and if we find you, you, if you leave without permission. And one more thing, you must come and report every month to us. Hearing this, I was indignant and thought, just because I believe God, in God, you arrest me and gave me a four-year sentence, you have deprived me of my freedom and subjected me to inhumane torture and torment, I narrowly escaped death and finally got out of jail, and, and you start to control and resist, restrict my personal freedom even before I get home? Isn't this putting me in jail without walls? You are so hateful. That's what she wrote, just because she was a believer in Jesus Christ. And the story goes on, as I said, it was quite lengthy. And the suffering this lady went through is just because she was a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. We are so thankful. We are so blessed. We are so rich. I tell you this story to remind you of something I mentioned last week about who Paul, Peter was writing to. Remember, he was writing to the Jews who had dispersed across the nation, the world a little bit there. And he, the list there of several countries there and cities that uh, they had been scattered to. And Peter wants to offer them hope in the midst of their discouragement, in the midst of their suffering. Remember, <coughs> excuse me, they left and fled uh, Israel because of suffering. And when they got to the, wherever they were, were, they found more suffering. And Peter begins this verse today with a very traditional blessing. He says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. When I was in seminary, one of my professors asked us the question uh, in regards to an introduction like this. He asked us um, if this was important, if we should preach on this, if it had any theological significance uh, or was it just kind of general stuff and really nothing to get too excited about? And what he did is he brought into our classroom several Old Testament, not Old Testament, New Testament documents from around that area, around that same time, and all of them begin with the same greeting. And so the question is, is this, any, is this really inspired, uh, anything significant? Uh, it's be same, similar to us when we write our letters and we say, Dear John, or Dear whoever. Is that inspired? You know, that's, that, that was the question of it. And it may sound small, but I do think there is a, a little difference in the Christian greeting that is very, very significant, as small as it may sound. See, secular writings would say, Blessing be the gods. Small g, plural s on the end. Blessed be the gods. Peter's writing, blessed be the God. The God. The only God. So I think the little difference is significant myself. Though I would not want to match wits with my professor by any means. But praising gods with a small g was a very common practice. And there were many gods in the culture of the day. And the apostles wanted to make it clear that there was only one God and Father of all. One God and Father of all. And that's what Paul addresses, Mars Hill address in Acts. He talked to them about, you have these statues to all these different gods, but I want to tell you about the one you have, the inscription that says, the unknown God. He is the one and only God. And so the Christian greeting was different than the secular greetings. And this was the same God for whom these Christians, Jewish Christians were being persecuted for in their faith. Peter is saying, bless God in your storms, in your trials, in your sufferings, in your persecution. Don't you hate it when you go through a difficult time and some well-meaning Christian comes up to you and says something to this effect, God causes all things to work together for good. I don't know about you, but I've heard that sentence said to me a few times. 
I wanted to punch them in the nose. <laughs> I did. I did. I remember when Fiona and I were still young and having children. We had a child between Danielle and our son, Stephen. But we lost that child. Uh, just a miscarriage. And well-meaning Christians came up to us and said that to us all the time. And I learned a very good pastoral lesson with this event. Quaint Christian answers are not what people always need to hear. We don't always need to hear the quaint Christian answers. Sometimes we just need to say, I'm sorry. Sometimes we just need to cry with that person. You know, it doesn't take coming up and thumping them with the Bible on top of their heads. Hurting is okay. Hurting is part of life. Hurting is part of being human. And these Jewish Christians were suffering. Peter is going to share with them in this book all the blessings that we have in Jesus Christ. He wants them to have hope for tomorrow in their sufferings. Sometimes we not, may not be ready to hear it, but later on, those words those people said to me were true. Sure, they were true, but I wasn't ready to hear them on a spiritual level. I needed God's healing hand of grace and love. Peter doesn't just say, dear John, if you will. He develops his introduction. Why should we bless God? Why should we bless God? Well, he tells us in this verse, look at it. He says, because of God's mercy. Thank God for his mercy. How often in life have you turned a blind eye when somebody has hurt you and you've just shown them mercy? How many times have your children in life even hurt you or embarrassed you, and yet you have to turn that hand of mercy towards them? I think all of us, raising children, just living life, have been hurt by others. I think of the great Saint Stephen. Remember Stephen? Here was a man who preached the goodness of Jesus Christ to the Jewish crowd, and what did they do to him? They stone him to death. But remember what Stephen did? He prayed for, the, for their forgiveness in the midst of being stoned to death, literally. I tell you something. I hope I am willing to go to, 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 to the cross for Christ. And when I say the cross, I say figuratively, because I nobody puts anybody on the cross today. We don't nail people to the Christ. But truth be told, none of us know if we will stand up for the Lord Jesus Christ in death until we face that. I'd like to think that I'd be willing to lay down my life for the Lord. But you know what? It would be another thing for me to say if I was doing such a thing, Lord, bless these people, forgive these people. That would be another level of forgiveness that I don't know if I'd be able to do. That'd be a lot harder for me. And yet at the same time, I hope we are all thankful that in God's wonderful hand of mercy, he has reached down to each of us and saved us through the blood of Jesus Christ. We all know very well our own personal lives. We know our sinful thoughts. We know our despiteful actions. We know the desire that we have sometimes I, in thinking, I hope that person gets their comeuppance one day too. All those things that go through our mind that really are not a reflection of Christ, but in his mercy, he forgives us for those things. I think that's amazing. Thank God for his mercy. Thank God for his forgiveness. And so Peter is encouraging these saints by blessing them with God's mercy. I hope you love and enjoy and rest in the mercy of God upon your life. And so the question is, how does he show us his mercy? Peter tells us, by causing us to be born again. By causing us to be born again. Now, the fancy 
theological word for this is the word regeneration. Be born again, regenerated. As Baptists, that is one of the core distinctions we hold is that we, we believe in regenerate church membership, born-again Christians becoming members of the church. In order to be a member of our church, we believe you have to be a different person. You're a new creation in Christ. You were changed. You were different. You were committed to the Lord Jesus Christ. And Peter is reminding these persecuted Christians of the, their conversion experience that they too have been born again, made, be, made different people. Paul also, we know Paul, my, the great apostle Paul, uh, was a big proponent of a changed life, of being born again. Uh, Titus chapter 3, verse 3 and 5 says, For we also once were foolish ourselves, disobedient, deceived, enslaved to various lusts and pleasures, spending our life in malice and envy, hateful, hating one another. But, that's a big but, but when the kindness of God our Savior and his love for mankind appeared, he saved us, not on the basis of our deeds, which we have done in righteousness, but according to his mercy, by the washing of regeneration, renewing, by the Holy Spirit. We are different. We are changed. We are different people in the Lord Jesus Christ. And Paul reminds them they were who they once were, but who they are today because they are born again. Go back to our text. It says in 1 Peter 1, verse 23, uh, it, it, the sentence continues, For you have been born again, not of seed which is perishable, but imperishable through the living and enduring word of God. You know, professional port sports teams, even the more elite amateur teams, uh, hire motivational coaches to push the players, to motivate them, to encourage them in their development and whatever it may be. I remember back in, I believe it was the 1980s, uh, some of you will remember this too, do you remember the old Rocky series? Hmm? Remember that story? Remember that story? Remember the, the music? How often have we listened to the Rocky theme song to prepare us and motivate us for a race or whatever it is we have we, to motivate the people uh, we hear that rocky song, dun, 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 and you kind of get the blood going, and you're ready, and you, that's what the, they do. It gets you motivated. And there may be some people sitting here today. There may be some who are listening online who have no idea what I'm talking about, being born again. If that be the case for you, perhaps you've never surrendered your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Perhaps you have never experienced the blessing, the absolute blessing of God's mercy and grace extended to you in the forgiveness he gave to you through Jesus. You know, for in order for salvation to be true for us, we must be born again. Jesus said it. You must be born again. We must be changed into the image of Jesus Christ. We must submit our wills to his will, and our wills need to become his will. Peter is saying what a blessing it is to be born again. I hope you can say amen to that today. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15 says, But sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. You need to hear that. Set apart Jesus as your Lord and Savior, always being ready to make a different uh, defense to anyone who asks you to give an account for the hope that is in you, yet with gentleness and reverence. Are you born again today? Have you sanctified, set apart Jesus as Lord in your heart and in your life? And that simply means that Jesus Christ is first and foremost in everything in your life. Who you live for, who you give thanks to, who you raise your children to come and know, Jesus Christ. Peter reminds these persecuted Christians to continue to set Christ first and foremost 
in their struggles. In their struggles. Be thankful, folks, for God's mercy that is extended to you, that he has saved you through the blood of Jesus Christ. Now the question is why? Why should we set Christ as first and foremost in our lives? Why even bother? Well, again, Peter tells us, because of the hope of the resurrection. If God raised Jesus from the dead, he is certainly able and willing to raise us from the dead. In other words, God gives us reason to believe. God gives us hope to trust. He proved it with the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He can defeat sin. It cannot hold him anymore. And if it cannot hold him, we as his children can be reassured of the resurrection when the Lord Jesus sounds the last trumpet and the dead in Christ shall rise. What glorious hope we have. I don't know the trials and struggles that everyone here is facing today, but I do know this, that if you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I know that in your struggles, you have hope because of Jesus Christ. That doesn't mean by any means, as we all know, that we are removed from trials and struggles. Rather that in the storms of life, in the storms of life, as Jesus reached down his hand to Peter to draw him up from the storms of life when he walked on the water, Jesus is willing to do that for us today too. He died for us. He died for us. He rose from the dead, defeating death's grip over us, and he extends that wonderful hand of mercy and grace to us today. So what hinders us today from refusing God's hand of mercy? He wants to give you his love and grace. He wants to have a relationship with you. You know, God says today, today, is a day of salvation. None of us have a promise for tomorrow. Will you trust in Jesus as your Lord, your Lord and Savior today? Will you be born again into the new life given to us in Jesus Christ, to live for him, to give your life over to him, everything you do, the Christian life truly is the greatest blessing, truly is the greatest blessing to live out daily, but it is also because and solely because of God's wonderful hand of mercy and grace and love. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, you did so much for us at the cross of Calvary. I am so thankful, Father, that you reached out your hand of grace and mercy to us today. And I pray, Father, if there be just one here today who does not know what it means to be born again, may they do so today. May they learn of your love for you, for them, rather. May they surrender their lives to you their entertainment, their workplace, their friendships, uh, their service, may it all be turned over to the Lord Jesus Christ to live for him. It is the bl greatest blessing and joy in the world to live for our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for your mercy given to us. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. We're going to stand and sing in closing the wonderful hymn about There Shall Be Showers of Blessing. Let's stand together as we sing.
shall be seasons refreshing sent from the Savior above. Showers of blessings, showers of blessings we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we shall be showers of blessings precious reviving again over the hills and the valley sound of abundance of rain showers of blessings showers of blessings we need mercy drops round us our but for the showers we please, there shall be showers of blessing, sends of upon us, O Lord, grant to us now a refreshing, come now and honor thy word. Showers of blessings, showers of blessings we Bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.